All right, what's going on, Giants fans? Doing another free agency film breakdown. We got backup QB Mike Glennon. We got Mike Glennon. We got old giraffe neck having ass. Um, first, like, subscribe. It's the easiest thing you can do. If you don't like the channel at the end of this video, unsubscribe. But I think you'll like it. I'm um, going to go through Mike Glennon, this backup QB. going to go through his last two games of 2020. Uh, week 16 versus the Bears and Week 17 versus the Colts. Like I said, six foot seven, 31 years old. Uh, for his career, 61.1% completion percentage, 6.4 yards per attempt, 43 touchdowns, 25 interceptions. This previous season in five games, 62%, 6 yards per attempt, 7 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. So, nothing crazy. You know, he's not the best, you know, backup QB money can buy. But I never wanted the Giants to do that. I always wanted them to, you know, spend bare minimum on the backup QB because of other needs the team has. And kind of have that like all in on the starter and just admit like hey if Jones goes down we're we're gonna have issues but we're not I don't think we're a good enough team to really really splurge at the back of QB I know some people disagree um, but I thought they're gonna bring back Colt McCoy um, they didn't now Glennon has a, a stronger arm he can make better throws than Colt McCoy but it seemed like the coaching staff genuinely liked McCoy you know he would meet with the you know Patrick Graham and Joe Judge after practices telling him which disguises work and did not but Glad Glennon's here. Who is Glennon? Well, six foot seven. He's got a really strong arm. You know, played a little bit for the Bucks, and then the Bears gave him a shot, and then that ended quickly. His, he's like a he looks one way and then goes the other type QB. Like he knows what he wants pre snap, but he's gonna look to the left, even though he knows he's got you know a dig or a curl he's looking at towards the right, um, which really helps against linebackers in coverage in the intermediate game. Likes to take shots. But he's not like a reckless, like Jameis Winston type shot taker. Like his game is, is based around the short to intermediate game. But he's gonna take those shots, and he's not like a, he's not afraid to, and he has the arm strength to do them. Um, and then accuracy wise, you'll see in this video he has some beautiful passes. And then there's just some that are inconsistent. There's he's just inconsistent where it's like this would have been a nice play, but you threw this two three yards behind him. So, anyways, let's get into the film, Mike Glennon. First play. Got a curl to the right. Again, this is this is an 18-yard curl, you know. You got to put some zip on this ball. And the Giants love their curl routes. Corner opens his hips, bails, wide receiver breaks. Bam, the ball's there. Let's see where the ball's coming out. Let's see if he threw it with anticipation. He does like to throw with anticipation. That ball's coming out now. That ball's coming out now, and the corner's got his hips open, even like has his eyes in the backfield. So good anticipation on that throw. Next play. He's going to throw this to the left to Shark. He gets hit on it. Just kind of misses outside. It's a good read. This is this is a third down and four. You know everything. You know this is covered. This is covered. This guy's bracketed. These guys are over here. So this is where this is the correct read for him. He just misses a little high. We'll see it from the other view. And again, it, I mean, just barely. I mean, Shark gets his hands on this, and maybe Shark should have caught this. But you put that ball a little lower while he's trying to toe tap. But anyway, like it shows off like the arm strength he can make, the, the throws on the sideline. And that's really when you could tell the arm strength of a QB. Next play. This is meant to be a shot play. You're trying to get him over the top. If it's not there, you got Shark at the bottom on this curl. Shark comes back to it. Good throw, first down. Next play, this really good anticipation on this throw. He likes to throw with anticipation over the middle. Again, look where the ball is starting to come out right now. Look where the linebacker is. He sees that linebacker is following Chevalt. Bam, nice throw. Nice anticipation. This next throw is a touchdown down here to Shark. This is a fun ball and a great catch by Shark, by the way. Just got wide receiver gets outside leverage, running a fade to the end zone. Even got you know Khalil Mack 
busting up in his face. I shouldn't have said that. That came. That's that one's gonna get clipped. And hey, the Giants are currently in talks with Kenny Galladay. We're, we might have that guy. We might have that guy. That's an awesome play. We might have the guy that make that awesome play. Next play. Um, now this one's an interception at the end of the half. So like this is bad. Like you know every QB has interceptions. This is a bad one. You've got him on a dig. It's the end of the half. There's there's 17 seconds left in the half. You're you're not going to score here. And just like you got to know, man. Maybe if it's if it's first and five, first and ten, or you know second and five with, with in in the middle of the first quarter, you can trust these linebackers are going to play a little underneath. But they're not, man. They're gonna they're gonna keep it out over the top, and that's just. You know, was just banking on this linebacker not doing his job. Got another interception here. This is just kind of... This is a bad one too, and you'll see why. The reason this is an interception is not because of a bad throw. It's because he's looking over here. He realized he's going to check to the running back. But you'll see it from the other view. You got Savalt coming on the drag route. So he's not expecting, you know, that drag route to be there. Trevathan gets his hands on it. Again, it's just kind of bad awareness. And then the ball gets tipped up to an interception for Roquan Smith, who's a player I freaking love, by the way. Um, so, like, that that's, a, that's a, a really boneheaded play. You know, those are two boneheaded interceptions. Here, just nice check down. Realizing it's not going to be there. Seeing these linebackers bail. Check down. Good stuff. So we're throwing to the tight end here. And this is just a smart throw. Okay. You realize this linebacker's playing this the corner. You got him on this stick route. To throw it behind him. Because he knows that corner's there. That corner is going to be peeking in that cover two look. So if he leads him on this, you're either getting your tight end lit up or an interception. So he throws it behind. So just good, smart ball placement on that one. This is third down. Just misses. This is third down and, and, and seven. Throw this one outside. Don't throw this one behind him. You throw this one outside, you got yourself a first down. You're moving the chains. But it's low and, and, and behind him. Doesn't make the catch. Even if he does make the catch, you're not getting the first down on that play. Here is the type of throws where it's like Colt McCoy's not making this throw. We're going to throw to the sideline. We got cover two on third down. You got this safety over the top with this corner plank, uh, you know, the, the flats. That's a tough throw to make, man. You got to throw that at the you got to throw that at the perfect time and you got to have the zip on the ball to get it there. That's a tough throw to make, man. That that's an impressive throw. That's the difference between Mike Lennon and Colt McCoy. I mean, that's a that's a tough throw to make. Those are the those are the throws that convince the Bears that they should pay him a lot of money even though they shouldn't have paid him a lot of money. Now you got him cover four down here at the bottom. So you're going to have these, this corner and this safety bracketing, double teaming the wide receiver. Puts it over the top. Not not a perfectly placed ball, but a, a well-placed ball. And then the touchdown for the Jaguars. Again, so this is where it's like, hey, he's not out there looking to just gun, you know, gun it out, you know, just chuck it downfield like crazy. But he's not afraid to either. You know, maneuvers the pocket, slides, he knows where he wants to go. And puts that ball on him. And you got yourself a touchdown. Versus the Chicago Bears. So let's move on to the Colts game now. Pull my Colts notes. I hate, by the way, a little side rant. I hate the camera view from the sky in domes. It's like, they, it's like they're shooting it from a blimp. Even though there's no blimp because they have a freaking roof over their stadium. It's, it's horrible. Like Are they actually shooting this all over, off the roof? Anyways, first throw... Tight window throw over the middle. Again, he likes to throw with anticipation over the middle. 
And you got these linebackers here. You got the corner on. This has to be a good. This has to be a nice, a good throw. Sees Leonard, you know, um, bailing. Puts it on him. Good throw. Again, same thing. Nice tight window throw. This is actually, I love this play. I love this play. Because you got, you've got mesh. You, you, or you got what you, what, what a defense would think is mesh. But you see, this wide receiver is going to whip out. These wide receivers are going to whip out. So, like, you, you got these linebackers reading mesh, and you let the tight end just slip behind them in the middle. Still, like, it's, it's, a, a, it's a, not a difficult throw, but it's not the easiest throw either. Like you gotta, you gotta have this right. You gotta, these these linebackers have to play it the right way. Puts it on them. I love, I love that play. That's a smart play. I like that play from from Jay Gruden in general. Here we got a Yankee concept where this wide receiver is gonna come and clear out, and then this wide receiver is gonna come across. Just good accuracy. Puts it on them. See it from the other view. Oh, I didn't. I didn't put the other move. My bad. But anyways, good accuracy on that throw. Now this is a completion. And this is on first down too, and he forces this throw. So this is where it's like you know the, the NFL is a one read league now. I know like I people really do put an over emphasis on like this guy's not moving his head. Like even on a guy who will throw a touchdown pass and be like, yeah, but it was his first read. It's like, 70% of throws in the NFL are first read. And that's not me making up a... 69% of throws, nice, in the NFL are first read. That's not me, like, just, you know, speaking out of my ass. That's... Those are the stats. But anyways, you had... You got the tight end wide open on this drag. And he forces it in there. Puts a nice, good ball. 18 catches it, which isn't the easiest catch. So, it works out, but... He does have the, the, um, the drag route underneath open. Going to throw the curl down here at the bottom. We know that Jason Garrett loves his curls. Corner playing off. That's still like, you know, that's not the the hardest throw. But throwing outside the numbers on those curls, man, it's... People don't realize how much of, of a distance there is on that. Got him here. He's going to throw the seam route. And this is in the, you know, with less than a minute left in the half. Beautiful ball. Beautiful ball. Beautiful anticipation. Again, look where, bam, he's in his backswing. He's in his backswing. This wide receiver's here. The linebacker's here. This safety's over the top. Just puts a beautiful ball on him. I mean, this is, this is awesome stuff. And it was important too, you know. This is the end of the half. Trying to get seven points, six points. Beautiful ball. That's the, st like I said, those are the throws that made the Chicago Bears pay him, even though the Chicago Bears shouldn't have paid him. But hey, you know what? Go get your money, dude. I don't, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take. I'm not gonna get in your wallet. You got a touchdown throw here. Um, just running back, running a flat wide receiver on a slant. Good throw. Good timing. Nothing special. Accurate. Somewhat of a tight window. Like yeah, you had you had to throw this ball in a good spot. Touchdown for the Jags. Next play. Now we're in, now we're in the third quarter. This is going to be a touchdown. We're going to see this wide receiver out here on this on this uh, on this corner route, right between two guys. You know, so it's it's it, this is this is a design play. Play action. Turn your head. Go. Turn your head. Rip it. Nice touch. Nice touch. Puts it outside. Doesn't have, make him have to come back for it. Now, he could have put it a, a little further outside. But hey, I don't want to argue with the results too much. I don't want to argue with the results too much. Okay, here. This is where I, I talk about like him being inconsistent with his accuracy. He likes to throw with anticipation. Give it a quarter of a second and put this ball here. Put this ball here. Instead, you know, you're, you're throwing what should have been an interception. 
whether it was on Leonard or, or off a tip up. Again, just give it, just give it a quarter. Just give it a, a. If he throws this ball at this point instead, and you throw this here, well, now you got yourself a nice play, and I'm showing off the highlights of our backup QB for the New York Giants. Third and 17. So this is the mindset that I like about Mike Lennon. And of course, this is, you know, part of play calling too. But a lot of QBs on third and 17, they're going to throw this. They're going to throw this. They're not going to throw an interception. They're going to work on their completion percentage. And they're going to hope that teams looking for a backup QB aren't going to look at this. They're just going to look at, oh, wow, pretty good touchdown to interception ratio. Good completion percentage. Good yards per attempt. So these are this is the mindset that I like about Mike Lennon. Where it's like, I'm telling you, a lot of QBs just throw it here. A lot of QBs throw it here. He forces it into this tight end. So it's the mindset I love. Here's what I don't love. This placement. <laughs> it's behind him. It's behind him. So that's what I'm saying. He's he's inconsistent with the accuracy. Like I said, you've, we've seen it. He has some beautiful throws. But he's just inconsistent at, at times. Here you got the play action boot thrown across his body. Nice little crosser to Chavalt. You see it from the other angle. Pretty good. And this last play. Nice throw. And just a drop. Nice throw in a tight window. Somewhat of a tight window. Not the tightest. And a drop. And a drop for the kid. Bam! Pop yourself in the head. Did Oh, did, uh, did he get mocked on that? Oh, no, that, that's just Darius Leonard doing his celebration. So, Mike Lennon, backup QB, more arm talent. So, he has, like, you know, if he's put in a game, you're probably more confident than the Giants were with Colt McCoy. I just thought the, I thought the Giants coaches genuinely like Colt McCoy. So, Mike Lennon, welcome to the Giants. Welcome to the Talking Giants YouTube channel, by the way. Like, subscribe, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, and hopefully, 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 we have a Kenny Galladay breakdown coming soon. And hopefully, you know, by the time you're watching this, it's already on the channel. Appreciate you guys. Let's go Big Blue.